Cookies are sent as part of the HTTP protocol, uh, mainly as a form of authentication. Uh, in a stateless world, you have each, each request has to have as much information as possible so that it can identify who you are. And it's also used for other stuff as well. But because cookies are sent with every request and because it's used for authentication, it can be quite large, right? And uh, cookies are just like any other headers are sent in the header section. And we have a huge size of cookies. I've seen cookies up to 4K. Uh, kilobytes really uh, they can take a lot of um, you know precious real estate in networking and uh, in a TCP world that kind of can slow down especially in a congested network so what do we do we compress right it's a text HTTP stands for hypertext right transfer protocol almost forgot what HTTP stand for oh my god okay so uh, we can compress the text right and then we know many many compression algorithms that that can compress the uh, text but the problem with compressing text is uh, there's an attack that people uh, kind of a uh, you know measuring attack that Using the compressing technique, the feature of compressing, people uh, manage to figure out the content of the cookie. And, and um, I talked about it many, many times in this channel, but uh, the trick was just basically if you have access to the client, you can keep sending data, even if it's encrypted, and uh, experiment with the data. And if you get a hit, the data will get smaller. That indicates that there's a shared character and that that knowledge can get you uh, get you in trouble really so compressing was actually disabled in HTTP 1 1 because of this reason because the moment you compress the headers then you give the uh, attackers a way to discover this sensitive information in the cookies so what we decided to do is uh, disable the cookie in HTTP 1 1 so we have large cookies and um, so we needed a way to solve this problem and uh, HTTP2 came in the picture and we solved it with an algorithm that is doesn't really rely on actually compressing the content but uh, using mapping uh, so HPAC came into the picture and uh, it's, it's a stateful way of compressing and, and the way it works is you basically do an entry it's a table on both sides of the of the client and server and you and you do header you say okay this header is the letter a or this header this value is pointing to the value of i don't know i whatever some some symbols and you just it's just a mapping at this point there is no actual compressing so you send these symbols instead and on the back end you look them up on the table. So this compression kind of solved this problem. And uh, this is just a, an FYI. If you have large, large headers and you're using HTTP 1.1, just make sure that uh, compressing is disabled. And if it's disabled, which I believe most clients do disable them in HTTP 1.1, then pay attention to your latency because you're gonna see a huge latency with large stuff. That was all, guys. That's a quick video to talk about this stuff. See you in the next one. Goodbye.